great to see you here again. Another video offered to you by the Custer Academy. We're still talking about um, number theory, numbers, divisibility, but now we are going to look into something different which relates to different ways to write numbers. We all know the decimal notation, but in computer science we use binary, but also octal and hexadecimal notations. What are they? But before starting, don't forget to click the subscribe button. If you didn't do it yet, click now, this is the moment. Or you can do it later, but it's better to do it now. Do not forget to click the bell button so every time there is a new video posted on YouTube, you will get a mes message reminding you of that new video offered to you by the Custer Academy. Now let's first start with the decimal notation. And the decimal notation relates to the numbers that we are using today. Let's take a number, 57,324. Basically, what are we writing here? We're writing 5 times 10 to the power 5, Oh, sorry, 4, uh, 4, then we add 7 times 10 to the power 3, plus 3 times 10 to the power 2, plus 2 times 10 to the power 1, plus 4 times 10 to the power 0. And 10 to the power 0 is in fact 1. Now, the numbers here, 5, 7, 3, 2, and 4 are the coefficients of the powers of 10. And that's in fact what we do for every number. We do it so naturally every day, we don't think about it. The coefficients, we call them AI, and those are for the, let's say, the decimal notation. They grow from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. So we have 10 coefficients, or we can say that AI is between 0 and 9. Basically, every number we can write as a summation. So when we have a number in basis 10, so the index here refers to the fact that I'm expressing this number in basis 10 or base 10 or in our case a decimal number. Now I can say here that this is the sum for the index going from 0 to n of ai, the coefficients, multiplied with 10 to the power i. Basically, what I write here is a n times 10 to the power n plus a n minus 1 times 10 to the power n minus 1 plus and so on a square 10 to the square plus a 1 times 10 plus a 0. And basically, that's the expression that we have for every decimal number. We can in fact continue with this expression here and we can express any number, any decimal number as a sum i equals 0 to n with the coefficient a i multiplied by c to the power i. And c is the base and in our case here, for the decimal numbers, c is equal to 10. But we're going to use the same expression, the same formula, to create numbers with a different base. The general expression of a number, whatever the base, was that a, the decimal number, is equal to the sum for i equals 0 to n, a i times c to the power i, and a i is between 0 and c. 
Now, in the case we're going to the binary numbers, we say the base C is 2, which means that we have AI is between 0 and 2, 2 not included. Basically, it means we have the binary, that's where the name comes from, either a 0 or a 1. And we have, in fact, the formula A10 is the sum i equal to 0 to n a i times 2 to the power i. Now, what is always good to know is to write down those powers. And when we look at the list of the powers, we can say that 2 to the power 0 is 1, 2 to the power 1 is 2, 2 to the power 2 is 3, uh, sorry, 4, 2 to the power 3 is 8, 2 to the power 4 is 16, 2 to the power 5 is 32, 2 to the power 6 is 64, and 2 to the power 7 is 128. So we are going to use those, and basically when you're working with this, you will learn very quickly that basically we have those powers of 2. And in a computer you find those 64 giga, 128k elements like that are in fact used in computers a lot. Now let's have a look at the number. And the number I look, the number is 1, then 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, another 1, and 0. So this is the lowest order up to the highest order. So here I have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. So basically what I have here, 2 to the power 7 is 128, 2 to the power 6 is 64, then I have 32, 16, 8, 4, 2, and 1. Now, when I put that in the formula, first of all, when I write the number 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, I add the index 2 to be sure that the people know that this is a binary number. Because this number, if I don't specify the base I'm using, it could be a decimal. So basically, it's very important to indicate the base. Now, what do we want to know? We want to know what is the number, the decimal number, which corresponds with this binary number. What we have to say here, we have to have the coefficient. So we have here n equal to 7. So basically, a7 times 2 to the power 7. We have a7 is 1. So basically, we have here 128 plus 0, plus 0, plus 16, plus 8, plus 4, plus 2, plus 0. And when we do the calculation, when we, you would add up these numbers, you will see that this is 158 base 10. So this is the principle of the binary numbers. Later we will look into some videos, we will do the transformation from a decimal to a binary number, we go from binary to octal to hexadecimal and things like that. But first we have to define those different numbers with different bases. Let's continue and see what octal means. Let's show you what the octal numbers are. Basically we have now the C is equal to 8. We have in fact the formula AI times A to the power I and AI, the coefficients, are between 0 included and C not included. In the case of the octal it means that a is, or the coefficients a, i are between 0 
and 7. Now let's have a look at the number that we can use 1735 base 8. Now what do we have here? Well we have first of all the number 1, 7, 3 and 5. The coefficients i are 3, 2, 1 and 0. So basically we have here 8 to the power 3 is 4096. 8 to the square is 64. 8 to the power 1 is 8 and 8 to the power 0 is 1. Now based on this we can say that this number 1735 base 8 is in fact 1 time 4096 plus 7 times 64 plus 3 times 8 plus 5 times 1 and when I do the calculation I will find that this is 4500 and 73 in decimal notation. So basically this is the way that we transform, that we describe the octal numbers. How to work with them, how to do the different transformations, how to find the octal expression of a decimal number, we will see in our next video. Now we still have to finish the last part and that's about the hexadecimal numbers. The hexadecimal numbers are based on base 16. So basically we can write any decimal number equal to the sum of i equals 0 to n, ai times 16 to the power i. And the coefficients have to be between 0 and 16 not included. But there is a little trick with the hexadecimal numbers because we have numbers up to 15. Now when we look at the hexadecimal numbers we start from 0 to 9 which is classical but then 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 and 15 if we would write those numbers we would not be able to make the difference between 1 and 0 and 10 or 1 and 1 and 11. So in order to be sure that we understand that this number means 10, we replace 10 up to 15 by the first letters of the alphabet. So we have A, B, C, D, E and F. A typical hexadecimal number could be something like this. A, 1, B, 0, base 16. Now what we have here? So basically we have here a, 1, b and 0. And here we have 16 to the power 3 which is 4096. Here we have 16 to the square which is 256. Or Then we have here 16 and here we have 16 to the power 0, which is 1. Now when we start writing the number, we have to multiply those numbers. So we have to say a times 4096 plus 1 times 256 plus b times 16 plus 0 times 16 to the 0 which is 1. Now what we have to do, we have to replace the letters by their values. a is equal to 10, b is equal to 11. So basically what we have written here is 10 times 4096 plus 256 plus 11 times 16 plus zero. And when we do the calculations with the calculator or you put it in Excel or you use a program to transform these numbers, you will say that the hexadecimal A1B0 base 16 is equal to 41,000 
392 as a decimal number. So that's basically the last of the different numbers that we can define. We looked at decimal, binary, octal and hexadecimal. But before we finish this video, I just want to give you a short recapitulation after this. Let's look at a quick recapitulation of this video because we were looking into a lot of perhaps rather complex things certainly when you're looking at this for the first time. What we looked into in this video were the different ways to write numbers. We looked at the decimal notation, the binary notation, the octal notation and finally the hexadecimal notation of numbers. The, defin the definition, the decimal numbers have base 10. Basically their coefficients can be between 0 and C or 10. So basically we can have the coefficients equal to 0, 1, 2, 3, up to 9. When we have a number 5732 in base 10, it basically is 5 times 10 to the power 3, plus 7 times 10 to the power 2, plus 3 times 10 to the power 1, plus 2 times 10 to the power 0. I write it like this because we are going to use the same notation for the other numbers for the binary, octal and hexadecimal numbers. The first we looked at were the binary numbers. Binary numbers are used a lot in computer science and we know this because we've seen those ones and zeros, those numbers only made of zero and one. The base here is two, so the coefficients have to be between zero and two not included, so basically zero and one. A binary number typically looks like this, one, zero, zero, one, one, zero, one, one, and we put the index two to say that this is a binary notation because we could mistake this as a decimal or an octal or an hexadecimal number. So we have to be sure that we let the people know what base we are using to write the number, base two. So what does it mean? We have zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So the first one is one times two to the power seven, plus zero times two to the power six, plus zero times two to the power five, plus one times two to the power four, plus one times two to the power three, plus zero times two to the power two, plus two, plus one, which gives us a decimal number index or base 10, which is equal to 155. The octal numbers, now we have base equal to eight and the coefficients are between zero and eight not included. So basically they're zero, one, two, up to seven. When we have an octal number, 5734 with base eight octal, Basically, we write here 5 times 8 to the power 3, plus 7 times 8 to the power 2, plus 3 times 8, plus 4 times 8 to the power 0 or 1, which is in fact equal to 3036, not base 8, but this should be base 10. The last one, the last set of numbers are the hexadecimal numbers we see that the base is 16. So now we have the numbers, the coefficients are between zero and 16, not included. So basically we have a zero up to nine, but we said before the numbers lie larger than nine, like 10, 11, up to 15, we cannot use their decimal notation and we replace them by letters. A is 10, B 11, C, D, E, and F, and F is 15. Now, when we have a number in hexadecimal notation, for example, A2, E1, base 16, means that we have A times 16 to the power three, but this is 10, so basically we replace, when we do the calculation, we replace A by its decimal value is 10, 
plus 2 times 16 to the square, plus e times 16, and e is 14, plus 1 times 16 to the power 0, and we find a decimal number, 41,712, base 10, which is the decimal number corresponding with a2e1, base 16. So this was the video about those different notations, decimal numbers, binary, octal and hexadecimal. We will use that later in other videos, how we do the conversions between those different base numbers. That was it for this video.